Good evening, welcome back to the Odd Pal YouTube channel. In this video, I want to be doing a market watch for February 2024 on how the popular Tudor watches are doing. And this would include the Black Bay 58, the Black Bay 54, the Pelagos 39, the Pelagos FXT, the Tudor Ranger, the Black Bay Chrono, and also the Black Bay GMT. I don't believe I'm missing any, but if I am, then I will add them to the video right after the intro. Gonna need my glasses on for this video because we are going to be comparing the prices on Chrono 24 versus the prices that they are selling uh, on the website for MSRP. And uh, today, quick wristwatch check, I'm wearing the Black Bit 58 so I can be part of the burn myself because um, pretty sure that this watch is doing, I would say about $2,000 lower than MSRP right now. Um, yeah, why, why don't we start with this watch first? So the Tudor Black Bit 58 was introduced in 2018 or 19. I'm terrible with numbers. You're gonna find in a lot of my videos. Um, if you are new to the channel, I often get like dimensions and sizes and things like that wrong. So um, <laughs> fingers crossed, I get everything as accurate as I can in this video. Um, oh, also one more thing I wanna quickly mention. So any watch that comes on a steel bracelet, I will be going off the prices off steel bracelets. So I'm not going to be like looking at um, leather straps or natal, stra natal straps sorted by the lowest. I'm always gonna be looking at steel bracelets. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the Black Bay 5879030. There's the blue one and then there's the black one. So right away on the first page of Chrono 24 that I'm on right now, um, I see a Black Bay 58 on bracelet. This is the blue one for 3,154 Canadian dollars. This is from the UK. Um, there's another one for 300, sorry, 3,355 Canadian dollars. This is from Japan. And um, I'm a big fan of buying watches from Japan because I feel like their uh, dealers are all very trustworthy. Um, and I bought, I think, three watches now off Chrono 24 from Japan. Never had a problem. Um, so this is the watch right here. As you can see, the Black Bay 58, the photo shows it very clearly. Um, yeah, so, well, first of all, this watch was retailing for $5,500 as of last year, um, before the price increase of 2024 kicked in. So yeah, that's that's a $2,000 loss there, and that would be, I wanna say like a 30% um, price retention drop or depreciation, whatever it's called. Not good, but expected. Okay, let me keep scrolling. The, lots of blue ones actually so i think the first page of chrono sorted by lowest for the black bit 58 is all blue ones okay <clears throat> i found one so there's a black one here oh there's two actually oh there's there's four okay there's four black bit 58s in this single section um it's ranging from 3721 canadian dollars to 3738 canadian dollars okay so 3700 is probably what i want to say the um average is and yeah, that's, well, <laughs> that's about 1800 off of retail. So still a pretty steep decline. I would say pretty, yeah, pretty much is the same as the, um, uh, the blue one. Now, just real quick, I'm also spotting here, there's a silver, the 925 version. This is also 3,735. And this one, if I recall correctly, is a little bit more um, when it comes to the MSRP. So yeah, definitely these watches are not holding value. And um, I mean, as I said, it is pretty expected because Tudor, um, like Rolex pretty much pushed all the people that wanted a Rolex but can't get a Rolex over to buying Tudors. And as a result, made a lot of Tudors, sold a lot of Tudors, and now it's getting in a situation where people are starting to need money in this economy. Um, and now there's a lot of watches on the market. Like there's 849 listings right now for the Tudor Black Bay 50 on Chrono 24. This is not including eBay. This is not including um, Facebook Marketplace. I know for myself, when I want to sell or buy watches, I usually look at Marketplace just because I don't have to pay all sorts of fees and duties and whatever. So. This is definitely just a, a drop in the bucket as far as the uh, number of available models that are out there. Um, let me get off this tangent. Okay, next watch would be the Tudor Black Bay 
um, 54. I'm not going to look at the 41 in this video just because there's too many variations and unfortunately um, I don't deem it as like a chase piece or like a flagship model as weird as that sound because that's the original Black Bay. I guess it's similar to how the OP is in the flagship in traditional terms uh, for Rolex. So, okay, um, I'm seeing a few here on the rubber bracelet for 4240 Canadian dollars and that's from Japan. I don't know if this includes this deal. Like, I'm pretty sure when you buy this, you get both, right? Let me just double check here. That'd be weird if they took the steel bracelet and just left you with the rubber. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go to the first confirmed one that has a bracelet, just based off the picture. So, this one is $4,864, Europe Production 2023, box and papers, full kit. Um, that's not bad, but I mean, value retention wise, it is a lot more of a popular model right now, which is weird to me i feel like the watch really is too small for my personal taste um but i guess just because new and also was tapped into a previously untapped market as far as dive watches for tudor goes so okay yeah i, I respect that and i understand you know four thousand seven hundred dollars um to be around that benchmark next one i want to look at is the tudor pelagos 39 the titanium watch so this watch was also very, very much hyped when it first came out. Um, people saw it as that red line Submariner equivalent in the Tudor family tree. And this watch is... Oh, that was sort of by relevance. Oh, well, this wasn't. This is high. So $4,968. Correction, sorry. That's on a Jubilee bracelet. Where the hell did their stock bracelet go? Hmm. Weird. Okay, I'm not even going to look at that. Um, okay, so there's one beside it. 4,989 Canadian dollars for full kit from Japan. Um, yeah, it looks to be pretty good condition. There's no like clear signs of wear or anything. So yeah, this watch, I definitely think the retail price is a little higher than their steel counterparts, but $4,900 is very respectable. And uh, just to show that this watch is still very popular. Um, that's good. That's good to see that the Pelagos 39 is doing well. Let's look at the Pelagos FXT. So I want to look at the Marine National and also the Blacked Out version. Of course, there's also the Red Bull and the Red Bull Chrono, but um, I'm not going to touch on that in this video just because I feel like that's not a flagship per se. It's more of like a limited exclusive run relationship sort of thing. Um, hard to justify seeing that it's both a collaboration with Red Bull and also with the Marine National, but Please excuse my bias here. <laughs> um, okay, let me sort by low to high. Yeah. So the first two I see are the Marine National. Let me see what year this was in. 2023. Wow, okay. Full kit. So this one's selling for 4,497 Canadian plus $300 shipping. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm not going to say any like MSRP numbers that I just don't know for sure because I'm going to have to probably end up editing it out. But I remember when I bought the Marine National, I spent like 5,005 or 5,700 Canadian on it. So definitely the depreciation is there, but not as drastic. And I'm kind of noticing a trend of like the titanium watches tend to do pretty well. Not, not sure why. Um, there are also a few uh, Red Bull... FXDs here that are in the same price range. I guess carbon fiber is cool as well. I'm not seeing any. Okay, Black Dial is here. So Black Dial, 4,800. So about $400 more than the Marine National, which kind of makes sense because to me, this is the more wearable piece um, of the FXD collection. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this in, the, in a previous video, but if there was one brand new Tudor watch that I would buy from the lineup at the moment, it is going to be the uh, FXD black dial on this super sick mil spec looking olive with the red stripe uh, Julian faux NATO strap. I think it just looks gorgeous and yeah, it's, it would be a watch that I'm trying to resist from picking up because I'm just buying too many watches. But okay, let's move on. So uh, what else did I say? Tudor. Let's look at the Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Okay, sort by low to high okay that didn't do what i wanted to do because it's showing me a lot of steel bezel versions okay um here's one so there's a black bay chrono uh black on black blacked out with a black bezel 
This one is selling for 4,543 Canadian dollars. Let me just make sure that's full kit. Okay. No box, but papers. I'm going to just treat it as full kit. Um, yeah. So 4,005 for the blacked out version. Let me find a panda. Here it is. 4,984 plus 92 Canadian shipping. So let me just call it 5k. 5k for a panda. Box and papers, pre-owned condition, gorgeous looking, nothing fatal or too obviously um, like obvious damages on it. So yeah, I would say 5k, 5k for the white dial and uh, 4.7, 4.5 in that range for the black dial. Definitely heavily under MSRP, probably the um, second biggest depreciation watch compared to the Black Bay 58, which was like $2,000 off. This one, the MSRP was $6,500, including taxes last year. I had two friends that bought uh, matching Black Bay Chronos. They one bought the black one, one bought the white one. And uh, yeah, it's looking like down about 1500 1005 to 1007 depending on the dial color. But, um, you know, as expected, nothing really lasts up forever, especially for these... I want to say like overhyped watch, but just hyped for a good reason, but also had a lot produced and a lot bought and sold. Okay, let's look at the Black Bay GMT. I think this was the last on my lineup. Um, and then we go into the bezel-less ones like the Ranger. So um, I'll look at both the Polar, the Pepsi, and then also the Black Bay Pro. So... The first page so far, I'm seeing all black dials and white dials. The black dial is coming in. Oh, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Just sort by relevance on default. Okay, so I'm seeing a bunch of Pepsis um, as expected because very much like the Black Bay 58, the market is super saturated with them since they came out in the same year during Basel World. The cheapest one on bracelet is 3,645 Canadian dollars. This is original box, original papers, year of production 2018. So this is... The first year it got released, um, a currently almost six-year-old watch. Um, coming down a little bit. Wow, it's all Pepsi's, eh? I don't see a single Polar or... No, that's not a Black Bay Pro either. I see a Black Bay Pro, but that's a NATO strap. Okay, gotta go next page. This is the first time I've had to go next page. Okay, um... Right away, I see a root beer. <laughs> this is on the NATO strap, so I'm not gonna count that, but uh, it's kind of cool how you see a root beer on here. Okay, I see a Polar GMT with the Pepsi bezel for 4,387 Canadian dollars, free shipping from Japan, and this is original box, original papers, year of production 2023. Let me keep going down. Wow. I am seeing a root beer on bracelet before I even saw a single Black Bay Pro. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe I've got it messed up. Maybe I have to Google, or not Google, maybe I have to query Black Bay Pro to get the Black Bay Pro. And maybe it's just showing me Black Bay GMTs right now. But this one on the bracelet is 4497 This is actually a really good price. Huh. You know, if it was slimmer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right when I thought about that i see this picture look at how slap sided that looks i was gonna say if it was any slimmer i would actually consider adding this two-tone watch to my collection but no this, this watch is way too so slap sided um let me keep scrolling down here okay i see a black bay pro this one is 4622 and there's one below it uh, 4626 with $92 Canadian for shipping. I'm not going to note that down immediately as the cheapest ones. Let me just Google quickly. Tudor Black Bay Pro. Let me see if I find anything. Okay, yeah. There's definitely cheaper ones. So um, I'm seeing one right now from Japan. 3928 Canadian dollars. That is a bargain basement deal. Combo meal deal, chicken, chicken, winner, dinner, whatever it is. Uh, still got the case back sticker, original box, original paper. So yeah, sub four grand for the 
Black Bay Pro GMT, which is a really good deal if you can put up with the thickness of the watch. Personally, I can't um, just because my wrists aren't built like that. But um, okay, moving on to the Tudor Ranger. This is the last one that I want to look at in this market watch video. And let's see how they are doing. Okay, so sort of by low to high, the first two are both on bracelet. $2,967 plus some shipping to Canada. And then you have one that's $3,010 Canadian dollars shipped to Canada. Um, both are original box, original papers. I've just had to scroll through like three pages of Tudor Royals and uh, Tudor 1926s to find all the different tabs of the watches that I wanted to price check on the Tudor website. But before we do that, I actually forgot to look up the Tudor Black Bay Bronze Boutique Edition. Um, this watch, just because I caught a quick view of it, it is selling for $6,060 on the Tudor website. Um, let me just query this in properly. On the secondary market, keep in mind that it does patina and tarnish. It's selling for four thousand four hundred twenty Canadian dollars. That's the cheapest one. So actually, this is holding up pretty well. And my gut feeling is that this is holding well because it is a more exclusive model. Obviously, you can't get it brand new if you don't have a uh, retailer near you. But having just experience with this watch, and uh, this little YouTuber that I watch, his name is Brendan Boswell. He's a bit of a character. He's from the UK if I'm not mistaken. He recently bought this watch and he has a bunch of issues with it. Um, I'll leave a link down to his video in the description but personally I would not recommend this watch if you are looking for any Tudor model especially at retail. Um, I would urge you to get if you're a guy to even get a clear to rose before you even touch this watch. It's just I'm not a fan of it. I think you know wearing a bronze watch like this is definitely biased but the fact that it patinas and just looks all gunky and junky and smells and disgusting after a few years of wear is just not for me but if you love bronze watches then all the credit to you um okay so let me quickly do a price comparison to the tutors website so starting off we have the pelagos fxd this is the black dial on the julian fu nato strap it is selling for 5220 canadian dollars let me just make sure this is canadian this is canadian please tell me this is canadian Okay, yeah, that is Canadian. It doesn't say anywhere on the website, it doesn't say in the slug either, but I did a quick Google and just confirmed that the USD um, for the Black Bay 58 was $4,000. So let me start with this one actually. So the Black Bay 58 is 4,990 Canadian dollars, um, plus tax comes out to 5,500 around there. Um, I think 15% or 18% tax on these things. So definitely you're gonna take a uh, haircut if you buy that at retail. But if you really like the watch, just like I do, I have no problem buying it at retail. But uh, again, I bought this watch two years ago now. So you might be able to get some sweeteners off the top or maybe have a few things thrown in. Who knows? I'm not going <laughs> to give too many ideas, but you can get creative. Go watch some Archie Luxury videos and see how you can get a better deal at the boutique. Um, the Black Bay 58925. This one as re is retailing at 5,780 Canadian dollars. The Tudor Black Bay Chrono Black and White Dial is retailing at 6,900. Is this correct? I feel like that's so high. 6,910? $10 afterwards? Canadian dollars? That's crazy. Because I was sure this was $6,500 last year. Wow, imagine buying this brand new now, and especially after the April price increase, I just, I can't justify, you know, spending 7.5K on a Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Uh, that's just, yeah, you just get a, just get a 79260, just get like a 79280 to 90, whatever it is, like, don't touch this stuff. This is way too expensive now. Okay, so the Tudor Black Bay 58 Bronze, like I was talking about, $6,060 with a complimentary chocolate colored needle strap. Don't touch this watch. Get it used if you want, but the only case where I can see you wanted to get this watch is if you have a Black Bay 58 like myself and you think, hey, maybe this watch will look pretty cool with a chocolate dial or maybe with a chocolate bezel and you want to buy it just to swap the parts out and, you know, play Lego with your watches. Then, yeah, you know, try it out. See if it works. See if the uh, 
teeth on the dial fits the same as the Black Bay 58 steel, but otherwise, don't go for this watch. Personal recommendation. You have the Black Bay GMT root beer, uh, it's called SNG on here, $7,630. Wow, what did we see earlier? Was it 4K? Was it like 4.5K for this watch, right? And this is before taxes, so after taxes, like eight grand. So you're losing pretty much 45% if you buy this watch brand new. Holy, that is a steep drop. Um, Black Bay Pro retail for 5,260. So after taxes around 5,800, I wanna say. Um, sell a uh, big dip. I think all of these more popular models are around like $1,800 uh, in terms of depreciation right now. The Tudor Ranger on the steel bracelet is $4,000. $4,120, okay, that's not that big of a drop. And then you have your Tudor Black Bay GMT. This is with the Polar Dial. I'm gonna assume that the Black Dial is the same. I'm gonna do a double check and just add it in if it's not. But this is only for $5,460 on the steel bracelet. And last but not least, you have the Tudor Black Bay 54. This is selling for $4,850 Canadian dollars. So this is probably the best, um, this is the, the, the piece retaining the best value probably at this moment. I omitted to look up the Pelagos FXD Marine National. So let me do that quickly. This is selling for 5,220 Canadian dollars. So overall, I think the state of the market right now for Tudor is that the retail is taking a bath. Um, Definitely, I think if you like the watch and you know you're going to keep it forever, you want your name on the papers and such, then yeah, go for a retailer if you have a relationship. Or if you're trying to build one that your AD happens to sell Rolexes or other harder to get models, then yeah, you can explore that. But otherwise, I really think now is a perfect time to get into the pre-owned secondary market. Not only for a tutor, but for pretty much any watch. Rolex as well, like the Rolex prices are dropping on the secondary market. And here in Vancouver, the GWC Rolex Boutique has confirmed that they can order day just for you. You can order a 36, a 41. You can't order like a um, Wimbledon dial or like a, um, uh, what's that one called? The one that looks like the, the leaves, the palm dial, palm dial day just. You can't get those ones, but if you just want like a silver dial, you want like a blue dial even, um, green dial, they can order all of those things for you. Uh, but yeah, now is a perfect time to look into marketplace, look at your local um, secondary dealers. It is full of good deals and Tudor is just one of the many that are seeing a uh, coming down in terms of secondary market prices. And uh, yeah, if you are in the position of picking up a watch, happy watch shopping. I hope you find good deals. I'll aim to keep doing these videos once every four to six months probably and just see how much the market fluctuates and see if these prices ever go back up, what will happen after Washington Wonders, if any discontinuations were to happen. We'll keep a close eye on those but uh, yeah, if you are interested in those videos, if you are interested in my other type of videos, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.